Hello. Hello. Welcome to Honey Do Me Podcast. I'm Cass. And I'm Emma. And this is our podcast. Mm -hmm. Podcast. God, it always gets me with your name. Um, And we talk about sex and relationships and masturbation and touching all your holes and using all your digits or your mouth. Um, We talk about it all. We get down and dirty with it and with you, and that's what we like to do every Wednesday. Um, This month we are um, focused on tips, tricks, and naughty bits, which really means we're just uh, teaching you how to touch your genitals, whether that be um, with your own hands, somebody else's hands, somebody else's mouth, um, or just learning how to take care of them. So, yeah. (laughs) That about covered it. It did. Damn diddle. Yeah. We feel like there's so much to cover that two months is just a perfect time span to just Mm -hmm. really dive in, as Mm -hmm. we like to say. Um, And today we are going for the dong and we're using... We're using our hands and we're talking about hand jobs because it truly is something I stopped doing in high school and I want to bring it back. (laughs) I'm ready to try again. Um, These hands have just been itching (laughs) to do their job. That makes it, I don't know, maybe if you have itchy hands, you shouldn't be giving a hand job. (laughs) Yeah, you should check out that part first and then once your skin is cleared up, you can go in for a hand job. Do you think Um, athlete's hand is a thing? Like athlete's foot? I think so, because there's some sports that wear gloves on one hand, at least. Yeah. Like football or golf or those are all I can think of right now. Fencing. Fencing. You would have athlete's face with that whole thing. You got to put a whole kit and caboodle on. Yeah. That's so true. Hmm. I know. Um, Thankfully, I am not sporty at the moment, so I don't really think about it that much. So I can give all the hand jobs I want. We are talking (laughs) with sex educator Keely Rankin, um, and she's just so much fun and totally gives us all these new ideas for hand jobs and uh, gives us quite a bit of coaching as well, which was really fun. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, she just splits us right down the middle and... (laughs) Shows you all our bits. And if you head to YouTube, you can also um, see with your eyeballs Mm -hmm. the movements we go over when we talk about different things to do on a penis with your hands. Um, And also beyond just how to handle a penis, we get into like mental barriers, which I love that we do that, that every time we talk about a new or different like sex act. We talk about the things that we kind of go through when we feel insecure or Mm -hmm. feel like our partner's getting bored with our performance or if we're good enough. It's like all of those things really do play into how you enjoy giving as and receiving. Um, And I love that we get into that with Keely. Me too. It's very fun. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, with that, we'll just leave you to dive on in and we'll see you on the other side. Goodbye. Bye. Well, my name is Keely Rankin, and I am a sex and relationship coach based out of San Francisco, California. And normally what I say about my work is I help people find pleasure. So folks, couples, individuals, people who have been married for a long time or people who are single and trying to date, all we do is look at where is pleasure, how is it blocked, and how can we help you find more sensation, more satisfaction in your life. We love that. (laughs) Amazing. What a great mission. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) We want to bring back, obviously, more pleasure and also an act that seems a little like juvenile, but I feel like it's just misunderstood. The hand job. So what are we missing about the hand job? Let's like sell us on it. (laughs) (laughs) So I like to talk about it, the lost art of the hand job, because... It is such an undervalued sexual experience. Mm -hmm. And I think what has happened is, you know, there's a lot of reasons why maybe it's gotten less popular. I think sometimes people feel like maybe it's, it's not easy or like, like blowjobs are easier or let's just move to intercourse or something like that. But I think what happens when we, when we move out of hand play, we miss the most incredible sexual organ, which is our hands. Mm-hmm. Our women know, right? They're like, oh yeah, digital play. Let's do this. I'm down. Like so many women, that's how they come. That's how they find really, really a wonderful ecstatic pleasure spots. Um, 
And I think sometimes men don't think about it that way, that like women can learn to do incredible things with their hands. It just often takes a little bit of time. Not a lot of women have given hand jobs. Mm -hmm. And so they're, I think, a little scared of them. They're not really sure like, you know, what to do. Maybe they tried it once like in high school or early college and they're like, that wasn't that great. (laughs) So they just like give up on it altogether. Mm -hmm. But there's so many opportunities to play with hand jobs. So I'm a big fan of them. I love that description. I feel like when I've talked to my partner about it, who has a penis, he'll say like, like, why would I want a hand when it could be like a mouth or a vagina or a butt? Like, it's like, why would I do that? (laughs) Um, But I, I feel like hands are a different feeling and they can be good in their own way. It doesn't need to necessarily be compared or instead of or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think there can also be this thing where it's like, if I'm, and I don't know why this happens for people, but it's like, oh, if we do a hand job, then I have to make you come from this. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be in it for a really long time versus maybe no one is orgasming during this play experience, or Mm -hmm. maybe it's just something we're doing for 15, 20 minutes. And then we maybe shift into something else that maybe has like higher states of erotic pleasure. Right. And I'm saying this as someone who doesn't think that they're good at blowjobs, but Mm. I would say that I don't think I could like you, what you said before, like, doesn't think that they're good at hand jobs. Like I do think I've never thought like, oh, I'm really good at this. I thought always, oh, my mouth is more taboo, more fun. So I could easily be better at Mm blowjobs. So why do the hand? That's something that's tedious. It's taxing. (laughs) Right. And that's what's such a bummer is that it feels like you even did the motion. You're like, yeah. oh, if I'm going to do a hand job. I'm just going to like do this one thing up and mm-hmm. down. And that's, I mean, our hands, they are so, it's for anyone who's watching this video, like look at all the things my hands can do. Like they <laughs> do open heart surgery. Like there's, they have so many wonderful ways that they can play and move. And I think sometimes we get locked in with our partner's genitals to either what we know works and we get a little fearful to try new things or, you know, we just kind of go with what we've seen versus really letting ourselves like take a deep breath and just explore new ways of touching. And when I really think about what happens with, with hand jobs a lot is people go actually to the move that they think makes orgasm happen too quickly. Mm -hmm. They're going for the shaft, they're going for the head and they're going up and down. And what, the men that I've talked with about this will report is like, it's too hard or too fast and it's not and it, and then it doesn't feel pleasurable. So there's a miss on what's where the pleasure is actually. Right. And also it makes me sad to hear you say you don't think you give good blow jobs. I, I want to go in for that, but I'll I'm gonna leave it because we're. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I hope to build up my confidence. I also don't yeah. give them. Okay. Well, so <laughs> it's, I think it's a learned skill and I think I could get good, but, um, yeah, I don't really have any subjects. You haven't put in the minutes. <laughs> I haven't put in I was going to say hours, but that <laughs> sounded like a lot. Sounds like a lot. Yeah. Um, well, a big part of it is enjoying it. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, if we think about what's satisfying for us to receive, we all want our partners to really be into pleasure, especially when it's a a one directional because sex can be mutual. Like intercourse feels oftentimes, I think people think of it as mutual pleasure. But when we're doing things where it's specifically moving on to energies, moving on to one person, you know, it it's this it's a little different. It's more this giving space. Mm-hmm. And that really, the hand job is, it's that giving space. Yeah. It's great. We were just talking about that too with another, I think um, we were talking about fingering the other day mm-hmm. and it is, it's like a fear of one partner being bored. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I feel like I, I haven't let myself practice enough because I do get self-conscious that either they're bored because a hand is a hand and they have a hand. Mm-hmm. So what am I doing? That's any better. Or like a hand is a precursor before the mouth. So I might as well keep moving on because they're just waiting for the mouth. And yeah, they might be, which which your partner might be. They Mm -hmm. may feel like they still also really want your mouth in that experience. Mm -hmm. And maybe you tell them no (laughs) in a playful way. (laughs) No, we're not doing that. Just these. I like that you said that they, 
do open heart surgery. Cause it's like, yeah, these are fucking powerful. Yes. You got to utilize them. Yes. Right. Absolutely. In the name of not going for the gold too quickly, um, <laughs> how can we start a hand job? Like what are some teasing techniques we can use? Maybe over the pants stuff. <laughs> Right. And I love that you bring that up because I think so often people think, and I, it, I'm i guessing it has a lot to do with movies. Like what you see with movies is like people always shoving their hands down people's pants and then they're coming mm -hmm. 30 seconds later somehow magically. <laughs> yeah. That is more in alignment with early ejaculation for anyone listening. Um, and really there is lots of stuff over the pants. And I think what also can happen sometimes is there's the there's a fear on both ends, I think, in heterosexual play that if a man is not erect, that he's not going to, he's either not turned on, not into you, or he's not enjoying what's happening, and that you can only really touch a cock if it's hard. Mm -hmm. And what's true is a lot of men, if they let themselves get out of their own sort of um, blockages around needing their cock to always be hard the instant someone sees them in a sexual loaded mm -hmm. experience <laughs> mm -hmm. that there's actually so much pleasure in a soft cock. Like mm -hmm. there is so much touch that can feel good. Assuming someone's not coming in and trying to get them hard and trying to make them orgasm from that place, but mm -hmm. so the soft, gentle stroking. So yes, there's lots of stuff over the clothes that you can do. It's a little tougher in jeans and with these tight skinny jeans these days, it's also a little bit tricky depending on the tricky. size of your partner mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the kind of underwear they're wearing. So mm -hmm. I normally say like, that's, you know, just want to pay attention because as the body gets harder, the cock gets harder, it can start to press a little bit. Most men will take care of themselves and sort of readjust. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, when it comes in general to, I think, this play space of, of hand jobs, we want to slow everything down. So it's like, if you're normally moving into sex, say at like an eight or a nine, sort of where most people are going in, it's like, we want to slow you way back down to like a one or a two, where you're breathing, you're taking your time. And as you're touching, you're sort of more in a caressing space where you're just sort of feeling and enjoying like, okay, what does this feel like? Like, what do I notice? How is my partner's breath changing? It, can I tell if any flush on their face is changing? Do I notice that their body starts to feel a little bit warmer in temperature? And you're sort of just playing in that space and also asking yourself too, like, what do you like about this? Is there any fun, anything fun about this? So playing over the clothes is a wonderful way to just sort of start that like moving. It's kind of hard to show on my body because I have the camera, but I'll do it like kind of in my neck. It's like moving through the whole area. So it's like, you don't have to go just for the genitals and stay on the genitals and try and like do something like this over. It's more these strokes like through the groin and it can be up onto the belly and up into the chest and up onto the neck and down through the arms. It can really start all over the whole body depending on what feels fun and sexy for you at the time. Mm -hmm. And when clothes start to come off, right? I think oftentimes people really rush through that too. Like hurry, mm -hmm. get the clothes off. That's what passionate <laughs> sex means. We take our clothes off really fast. Fast, and fast, sometimes, fast. Right, fast, fast, fast. <laughs> and sometimes it means that, like, yeah, sometimes it's great to go really fast and, and feel that. And I think a lot of times people are just rushing through because it's kind of become a habit. So it's like, can we enjoy taking the clothes off? And then as we move into the hand job, like, can you let yourself take deep breaths as you begin to explore your partner's body in that area, running your hand through their hair, moving the palm over the cock, going into, I break up the cock into different sections that are not based in like medical terminology. <laughs> so it. any of the doctors listening to this are going to be like, well, what is this person talking about? But I feel like when we go to the medical, people suddenly are not wanting to talk about sexy things. They're like, mm -hmm. they snap into like a different part of their brain. So I try with my clients to really stay in like less technically correct terms in some mm -hmm. regard. So I talk about like, there's the head of your cock which is often a place where many, many people have lots and lots of sensation. They feel lots and lots of pleasure. There's sort of a rim around the outside of the head. That's a great place to play. And we'll go, I'll go back into the different things we can do with, with the cock in a little bit, but I'm just going to give you the, what parts we're looking at. Then yeah. there's a shaft. So that's the part that comes like out of the head on the top and it goes down. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's the base. So it's the part that enters 
into the body. Then there's the balls. I call it the area behind the balls. That's the, <laughs> that's the least safest place I think we can go, the area behind the balls. And then the asshole. And these are all areas that are great to touch and explore. The asshole for some men can bring a lot of shame or a lot of discomfort. So, you know, if it's your first time playing with someone, I wouldn't just like go for starting to tickle or play with that area. (laughs) You want to ask, you want to make sure they feel okay. Mm -hmm. But in general, these other spaces, like we want to include them all. So we want to be moving our hands through either with our fingers, with our palms, on the tip of the head, we can go around in circles like this. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, and that's like, we can go in different directions. So we have two hands (laughs) if we're lucky. I know some people Mm -hmm. unfortunately don't, but for many of us, we have two hands and you can go in different directions. There's another, there's a term called the twist and shout where you go in different directions <laughs> and you actually twist. So like one goes this way. Kind of like that wringing way. out a towel. <laughs> yes, yeah. like wringing out a towel. That's perfect. <laughs> we could, we could change the name. <laughs> there's also like, you know, we can go and cup the balls. A lot of similar things I think people have figured out with oral sex, but it's taking the mouth out of it. Because when we put the mouth on suddenly... It, that becomes a main, a lot of people's main focus. They're starting to do a lot with their tongue and with their lips and sort of moving in that way. But this is sort of saying like, what if we just use our hand in these different playful ways? Mm-hmm. You can do like twisting back and forth like this can be fun going up and down twisting. Like a fire starter. A fire starter. <laughs> You're renaming. I like all these. Yeah. <laughs> you can do the holding at the base is also really nice for a lot of people. They really enjoyed like the holding almost like a cock ring can feel mm-hmm. really fun. But really the idea is can you take off the idea that you're supposed to go into that ma- that typical masturbation grab and hold and going up and down? Right. I think when we give ourselves permission that like that's not necessarily what a hand job needs to look like, mm-hmm. then it then we open up a lot of space. Totally. For sure. I when really I, oh, lo- go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna say I really appreciate the idea of moving slower because like you said, I connect so much with like fast movement, especially taking off your clothes quickly. And I don't know, it's probably because we're nervous and like that's a very vulnerable you know, action is like, I got to get it done fast. So you don't look at me. Um, but also I think you'd be a little less clumsy if we did go slower. And so I think that would definitely set like a good kind of confident, slow movement. And then you mentioned kind of stroking around that didn't even include genitals didn't even include the penis or the balls. And so I know that feels good on me. I guess I just didn't realize that on other bodies it could feel good too. And so I I usually stay just on the genitals, not, you know, around the abdomen and the legs and the groin area. But I love that you say that that's a part of it too. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting with men. So one of my subspecialties is working with men who struggle with performance issues. And it's so fascinating for the last, what it was, uh, 14 years I've worked with this population. Mm -hmm. And what's true, you know, all of these are generalizations. Some people do not like full body touch. Like it it actually doesn't feel that great to them. It's maybe too tickly or they just are not into it. They're typically the folks who don't like massages. Mm. Um, They also, those are, I've I've noticed there's a correlation. Like if, if people don't like massages, they often just don't like full body touch in general. Not always, but, but some of the time. But most men really, really do love full body touch. They really want it. They crave it. They don't know how to ask for it. They feel kind of silly or feminine asking for it because I think a lot of people in the heterosexual space feel like, oh, that's like what women need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this, the pressure to have to like be erect right away. That's what we sort of, we were talking about a little bit. It's like, if the cock is not hard right away, it's totally fine, actually. Mm -hmm. I love a flaccid peen. Right. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) And letting your partner know, like, it's totally fine. Like, just relax, enjoy. Like, we're like, we're just going to explore and have fun. And you can tell me what feels good or what doesn't feel good or, you know. (laughs) Absolutely. I, I feel like that's a really great reminder too, is to like, you don't always need to jump right into showing physically that you are the most turned on for this situation. Um, Yeah. And so, and the way that you were saying, like the words that you can kind of go leading into it, I wonder if you had a little bit more of like, 
hey, we can go slow. We can mm. like just tease ourselves into this. Like I would love to engage in some hand play only. Like if you had more words that we could use leading <laughs> into our play. I love what you just said. That sounds okay. great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, you know, I, a lot of people do want to slow down. What I've noticed in the couple work that I've done is that oftentimes both people do want to slow down. They just haven't talked about it yet. Mm-hmm. And so when one person goes first and says like, hey, I wonder if we can just like go a little bit slower here and not have the goal of orgasm, right? This mm-hmm. orgasm trap that I think a lot of us are sort of stuck in where sex is about finding an orgasm. And when the orgasm happens, then we're done and we've mm-hmm. successfully had sex. And I think taking out that and saying like, okay, what if we just enjoy something together that's a little bit different or that's, you know, not trending right now, hand jobs, mm-hmm. right? They're not <laughs> trending right now, although right. I wish they were. <laughs> And letting us just see, like, what is it like to play in this space? You know, one of the things I often talk about, too, with with hand jobs is, like, can you look at your partner's genitals? Because a lot of times people aren't actually, like, looking at what they're doing, you know? So true. Mm -hmm. So can you let yourself, like, just take a deep breath and actually look and see, like, what are you touching? What are you curious about touching? And, again, that question coming back to, like, what feels good in your hands? What feels good in your body? through your hands. Like how can you explore that pleasure and try different things? Mm -hmm. And just to answer your question of like the the different things you can say, I mean, I think it, it could be all the way from something kind of kinky, which is like, I'm not going to let you fuck me. We're just going to fuck with my hands, you know, something like that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's so fun. It sounds so fun, right? Or like, you're mine. I got you. Like, I'm going to do what I want and you can't move, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. You know, something like that. Off the cuff, <laughs> just a few things that could work. <laughs> Some things that could be fun. Yeah. Some people like that play. Other people that would not work for it. them. They would right. be like, no way. Mm-hmm. But, I, but going back to what we talked about early on too, which is when it's a one directional play, I think sometimes for people, it is really helpful to just say, I really want to try this thing, or I really want to do this thing, or it'd be so fun just to play in this way with you, or mm-hmm. um, I want to see what my hands can do. I want to I want to hear from you uh, what feels good. You know, one of the things going back to like um, strategies, techniques, you know, for, for actually playing with a cock is that oftentimes women are people, I'm saying women, but people, when they start to play with a cock, it's, they're playing a little bit too rough. Mm, Like they're, mm -hmm. they're not only going into that speed, but they're actually grabbing a little bit too hard. And so you really want to gradually move up in speed and pressure. If you've decided you want to take your partner higher in arousal or towards orgasm, you don't Mm -hmm. need to do this. It's just, if you're like, Oh, let's see if I can get you to come. Let's see what happens. Right. (laughs) Let's see what happens. You want to sort of gradually move up and not start with like a really strong grip because oftentimes what men do say is like it was too rough or it was too hard or she was like, it was like a pulling sensation. And that's not, we want to not, that's not really something most people are into. And so it's like, how can we help you find your own technique that you can connect with your partner and like check and make sure it feels good for them. And you can, and keeping continuing to ask is really helpful. Mm -hmm. Like I normally say when we're asking for feedback, we don't say, does this feel good? Cause that puts people in a position of like, are they really going to say no? Right. That's a, I don't know. I'm not. Mm-hmm. My first yeah. like, this mm-hmm. good. Well, I would now, but like <laughs> right. for a very long time, I'd be like, yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. You know, cause like, Fucking cool. <laughs> I'm yeah. having the best time. <laughs> <laughs> but really what we want to be asking is like actual feedback. Like, would you like me to go faster or slower? Would you like me to go harder or softer? So it's taking off this feels good. And I'm assuming Mm -hmm. that you think this feels good. Mm -hmm. And it's asking for direction, like where, which, like which direction would you like me to go? Oh, that is such a good like flip because I know Mm -hmm. my partner's definitely a people pleaser and Mm -hmm. I am as well. So it's just like easier to be like, yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want you to have a good time. Um, <laughs> so I love giving them a choice. Like, okay, which one? Because then they can say, no, like, this is perfect. Right. But 
they can actually easily voice change it without being sad coming off as like an asshole. <laughs> right, right. I think people feel really worried to give feedback, especially mm-hmm. in the one directional, right? Absolutely. Like if you're receiving touch and someone asks you if it's great, you're like, it's great. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. you also don't want to ruin the mood too. Like that's what goes on in my head. It's like if I say no or if I give like correction, right. then I'm ruining the mood and now it's my fault. So like right. that's also hard. But if you frame it as like, a sexy way to say like faster, slower, harder, Mm -hmm. then that could feel fun. And like the momentum is still there and there's no uncomfortable awkwardness. Right. And it's not this assumption of like, I need to know that this feels good. It's sort of saying like, I want to be with your body and I want to help you find pleasure. And so here are some options that might bring more pleasure, which is there any you want to take? Mm Mm-hmm. Versus, I think I'm the best lover you've ever had, and I'm blowing your mind right now. It's yeah. sort of the <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. That's super fair. Yeah, there is like a a frame of mind. It it's just so vulnerable to be like, does this feel good? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's <is this> nice. <laughs> is this right. nice? Yeah, it's almost embarrassing to ask that question mm-hmm. yeah. because you. I feel like I'm in a position of needing to be validated when I'm saying that. Yes. Um, right. You're not actually trying to see what your partner needs in that moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I need you to tell me I'm doing a really, really good job and I can stop. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. I need you yeah. to tell me you finished and that I just didn't see it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we're good. That's 100% how I feel. But I love that flip because I also do want to be sure that I'm like in tune with my partner's pleasure and I am giving a good job and I'm doing a good performance and they're enjoying themselves. And if I know that, then I'm having a good time, you can which relax is what more. we talked about. Yeah. Right. You can relax Absolutely. more. What you were saying about looking at their genitals. Oh, yeah. Um, so vulnerable. And I feel like that's true no matter where you're looking. Because if I'm just making eye contact, incredibly vulnerable. Like yeah. when I'm thinking of myself giving a hand job and where I'd prefer to look for my um, just being a sensitive person is just like off in the corner. <laughs> like you can have my hand, I'll just right. look away and you look away too. But obviously that isn't um, conducive to massive amounts of pleasure and connection. So what are some things that we can be doing with the rest of our bodies as a giver to make it not feel like, here's my hand, I'm going to just pretend the rest of my body doesn't exist? Yeah. So first off, if eye contact is tough, I probably wouldn't be trying to do eye contact with your hand job. <laughs> I like start with, advice. <laughs> start with eye contact somewhere a little less um, vulnerable mm-hmm. in, in many regards. Mm-hmm. I think there is there for some people it can be very, very sexy to make eye contact if that's comfortable for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's totally fine if it's not. And what I would say if you were my client is how can we start to help you feel more comfortable with eye contact so you can, like, what is it, you know, all Mm -hmm. of the things, like, what does it mean to make eye contact? What does it feel like? You know, what have you learned about it? What comes up inside of you? Can we start to watch it? Mm -hmm. Eye contact has a lot to do with um, safety, safety of being seen, safety of, you know, seeing people. Is it, you know, if there's, it's a huge gateway into a lot of deeper pieces that can be going on mm-hmm. that might so, make sense for me <laughs> that may be in there. I don't know I don't know please continue I don't know <laughs> so is, yes so it could be sexy to make some eye contact and it could be really creepy to be like continuing to just like stare someone down in their eyes <laughs> so just a you know, name a spectrum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the looking that I, the looking that I'm thinking about of like the looking at the genitals is more like really taking in and looking around. You know, when we think about objectifying someone, it, it, there is a particular look that happens in the objectification. And what feels good is connected objectification. Just objectification on its own typically doesn't feel great. That's not really what people are looking for. They're looking for a connected objectification where there's already a connection that exists I'm guessing if you're touching someone's cock, there's already a connection that exists. I'm assuming <laughs> to some one. degree, yeah. <laughs> to some, yeah. Hopefully, there's consent. We'll mm-hmm. just 
Yes. <laughs> and and actually uh, like taking people in and noticing them and enjoying what you're seeing, just like letting that live in your body. I think when people feel that, it, there's something just inherently sexy about that mm-hmm. for anybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in the hand job too, it's like letting yourself look. Do you feel like, Cass, you could look? while you're giving a hand job or is it just eye contact that feels scary? I feel like I could look. I think I just have a tendency to make things awkward when I get okay. even like a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, okay. Um and I'm like I'm married. I've been with my partner or... for a very long time. Um <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I like I can definitely look. It's like I guess I don't know like how long should I be looking for? And in my head I'm like Am I looking like I'm giving an exam at that point? I do have a lot of trouble seeing myself as sexy, I think. Yeah. And so to imagine doing something with the intention of it like being sexy, yeah. that's mm-hmm. where I feel like the disconnect comes in. Right. I get that. For yeah, you. Totally Just kidding. For me too. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally I get see that, that for you. For but you. definitely not for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You give that off. Yeah. <laughs> you give off the vibe that you don't know how to be sexy. <laughs> Thank you so much for the feedback. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it's really nice to be seen. <laughs> Anyways. I have so many questions I'm trying to like direct us back to hand jobs, but like I feel like I could just go in so many We love a right? coaching tangent. Yeah. So if you want if you want to ask questions, you're more than well, welcome. Well, I guess I'm to. just curious, does that happen during when it's like mutual play or is it just like when you're is it when do you have or and when you're receiving or just when you're giving I feel and I was actually just talking to my partner about this I feel like I enjoy activities more when it's like we're pressed up against each other because I'm not seeing a lot and I know he's not seeing a lot okay. I think I definitely have like insecurities around being seen and so I'll notice that with like certain positions like Doggy, I feel very exposed, yeah. so that's not one of my favorites. Also, I don't like a lot of cold air touching me. <laughs> yeah, I like to be warm as well. Um, so, yeah, heat. I think – and, like, for a long time, I had trouble with letting my partner go down on me because yeah. it just, like, being seen. And I've worked through a lot of that, but it's still – like, I just notice it. If I'm going to choose a sex act, I'm going to lean towards one where, like, less of my body is going to be seen. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. That a lot of questions on, on air. No, I, love <laughs> I think it. it's helpful. It's helpful yeah. to talk about for people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think the great thing about a hand job, if we go back to what we're talking about is like, you don't actually have to take any of your clothes off. That's true. So I, true. I normally say, what should you be doing with your body? Make sure you're comfortable. Like whatever position you're in, be comfortable. Don't do anything that's not comfortable, A. Totally. Yeah, I like that answer. This is not a porn shoot. No one's trying to get like a special shot of, of you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's really like can, can you be comfortable mm-hmm. when you're exploring this? Because it is, again, it's also really about your pleasure and seeing like what is a fun touch for you? What, what is a fun way? I was actually, interestingly enough, a couple of days ago talking with a client about hand jobs and she's like, I just like to watch him squirm. <laughs> mm, that's fun. Like, that's great. All right. <laughs> great. I I get. I mean, I tried out a few moves on a partner years ago that I had learned, and it was just fun because they worked and he loved it. And I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'm gonna keep going, and you're gonna keep squirming, and like I have all the control. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So my question was, if we're gonna talk about comfort, I've heard it's like a sin to go into a hand job without lube. Um. So what is your yeah. advice on that? Because also a spontaneous handy, I won't always have just like my pocket lube. Right. So how do we make sure that it's like still comfortable? And lube is not the solution to a, the best hand job. It's not. It's one. Oh. It's one okay. tool that's helpful. This it's not necessarily the lube; it's the sliding that you right. want. So you can also use spit, good old mm. fashioned spit. Think of good a lemon. Old fashioned. Think about biting into a lemon. You get suddenly a lot more saliva, mm-hmm. and then you spit into your hand. <laughs> there okay. You go. Great trick, right? <laughs> Great trick. Useful that's good to remember. Anytime you need spit. Mm-hmm. So. 
I think it depends. It depends if you're going for orgasm or not. What's true is not all men or masturbate with lube. Some masturbate dry without lube. Mm-hmm. I'm always a little surprised by that, but there is a great majority of people who do. So it's not always necessary, especially if you're playing with someone who's not circumcised, then you can play more with the skin that slides up and down over the head, which is oftentimes like how men that masturbate that are uncircumcised will move. That's what they do. They actually move the skin back and forth over the head of their cock. So you don't actually need any saliva spit lube for that. And if you start to talk about using lube with hand jobs, we have to really think about dryness and when it gets tacky. Mm -hmm. If you're just going for hand job and you're going for orgasm and you're like, I want to do this thing all the way through and my version of completion is orgasm. I'm just going to say if that's what you're going for. Mm -hmm. I would say actually go more for like a massage oil or massage mm. gel mm-hmm. or lotion, ugh, coconut oil is great, but some people have a, you know, the smell gets, they don't love the smell or can get on sheets and things. Mm-hmm. Um, so you might want to put a towel down, but if you're just like out in the world, which is the best part about the hand job, like you can be sitting at dinner in a booth across from your in-laws and like, <laughs> I don't know, your hand is going down into your partner's <laughs> genitals <laughs> playing like how great is that fiddling around in there <laughs> and no one's like hold on and put some lube on you know like it and that's like when I think about this type of play is like how can it come in in these kind of like places where you want to be sexually connected you want to play mm-hmm. but maybe you want to be slightly discreet mm-hmm. butter on the table <laughs> there you go a little butter just yeah. a butter ball. Just, oh I'm sorry I dropped the butter down here right yeah <laughs> I'm just but saying, if you're going to use creative. if you're going to use lube, mm-hmm. most likely it's probably going to be water based, and when that gets tacky, you'll want either spit or actual water to re lubricate. Because what's going to happen is with your hand and the air with lube, it's going to dry up much faster, mm-hmm. and you're going to get that really tacky feeling, and it's going to be even more uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But again, if we're just going with like the lighter strokes, and we're just really going with play and just sort of like moving and exploring. It, yeah, you can take your time before you grab the lube. Like, I think that's the, the fear of like, I've got to get the lube first before I put my hand on. And it's right. like, no, 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 no. Let's like move away from that and move into, let's just explore what feels good in your hands. And can you start to actually get out of this position and into like yeah. other ways of touching, exploring, including balls, including all of these different parts of this beautiful person's body that you're playing with, hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me a very vivid flashback of the first time I gave a hand job, and I used Hollister brand lotion. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> I love that you know that. <laughs> I had like collected so them, and yeah. yeah, that's what we used. So pick your scent, and <laughs> here we go. <laughs> that's great. Was it a good experience for you or a bad experience? Yeah, it was a good experience. Right. Yeah. They're, yeah. And they didn't complain of any burning or anything, so. Clearly, it Sick. wasn't that toxic of a lotion. Totally. Um, my first. You... Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say my first hand job was behind a pizza parlor. <laughs> there you go. Places you want to be sexually connected, but need yep. to be discreet. You yes. need discreet. Just saying. Um, you were gonna ask a question though, Cass. <laughs> yes. If you are wanting to bring out the lube, um, this is such a specific question. Would you put it directly on the penis or into your hand first? Like ketchup on a hot dog style or <laughs> or like hand sanitizer yeah. or hand sanitizer. I think it depends the you can do either, but we want to think about temperature if you're mm-hmm. going to go right onto your partner's genitals. True. Um, it okay. could be fun to be like, it's fucking freezing and I'm going to drop this on your body mm-hmm. and you're going to be cold, you know, mm-hmm. but also it may be really not pleasant. So I think it just sort of depends what you're going for. In general, I think it's better to get it into your hand, get your mm-hmm. hand moistened and then go from there okay that's a really good and if we're using the spit we're mainly thinking about spit like a if you're limited in spit (laughs) if you're feeling (laughs) you can't make a lot maybe you're dehydrated hungover or something like that (laughs) we want to think about more spit around the head that's the area that often has like the most that men experience the most pleasure where you can spend a lot of time exploring different types of touch with your fingers in different ways and that's where you would want to have that more gliding sensation 
Mm -hmm. Okay. I know this will be a human specific answer, but I've also noticed that you, like if there's pre-cum, that's also yes. something that we right. can use, but I never knew if it was <laughs> icky, like if my partner was considering it to be kind of weird that I'm using their own pre-cum as like my lube, but what are your thoughts? That that was just my thought in my head. I've never heard it. I've just like kind of what I've thought about. So most likely the men who, again, we're generalizing a lot here, but mm -hmm. men who have pre-cum are probably using it in their own play when they masturbate. So it would be oh. unlikely that they're probably going to think that it's gross. Mm -hmm. Yet some people do have a lot of sensitivity around um, uh, body fluids. We, I think we often think of that more with women, like that, you know, I think women come forward more talking about body fluids. Some men are squeamish and, and uncomfortable about body fluids, but what's true, unless he's watching, he's not going to really know that it's his right. pre-cum. So mm -hmm. it's something, if you're okay, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think you need to ask or anything like that. Okay. And you said, if, do not all people with penises have pre-cum? No. Really? Mm -hmm. I thought that was just, I literally thought that that was a sign. And I know this is so reductive, but that it, I was doing a good job, like kind of like an <laughs> erection. Like if there's pre-cum, that means that they're getting turned on. There's my validation. I know you're really going for the validation Check. in these experiences. <laughs> well, what does that say about me? <laughs> we could really get into it. <laughs> so, right. We don't want to look for... Not all people's bodies are going to show that they're having a great time that way. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think when we start to think about men as like, this means I'm doing good or this means that they're turned on, suddenly there's so much pressure on them too. Working with, with men around performance struggles, they are already so worried about what is happening down there. And if they've ever had a struggle before, it's like playing in the back of their mind, like, uh oh, am I going to be able to get hard? Uh oh, am I going to be able to come? Uh oh, am I going to come too early? Like they, if there's ever been a history of struggle, oftentimes it will run through their mind, especially in the beginning of a relationship. There's a lot, a lot of fear of, you know, am I going to be able to perform the way that I want to so that I don't embarrass myself and that we find a lot of pleasure together. Mm -hmm. So the, you know... <laughs> Pre-cum is, yes, it's not universal. Lots of men do have it, but it's also not necessarily an indication that you're, that you're getting it right, really. Right. Sort of sometimes it's for some people, the, when they get hard sort of right away, it starts to come out. For other people, they just never really have much. Some it has to do with sort of like a dehydration. Hmm. There's lots of different stuff going on there. Great to know. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to take that away from you, but also no, maybe a good I, thing. It's, it was never mine to begin with, so it was it's right, right. But you also may be in a situation where someone's not having pre cum, and then you suddenly find yourself really worried. Like I'm not right. getting it right. So I think it's good that we're sort of working yeah. through that. Like you, that's, I agree. You don't have to look for that. Rest Thank assured, you. Em. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for this gift. Well, go ahead, Cass. Oh, I would just love to get into more technical um mm -hmm. movements that we can be incorporating i would love to have just a um large repertoire that i can Things pull can from try. yeah right mm -hmm. right so one of the areas that people don't go to very often is balls like do you okay. guys play with your partner's balls very often um not no. often yeah. Um, and we actually just got an email, not from my partner, but, um, from <laughs> a listener. You know what? It could be my partner. Maybe that was personal, <laughs> um, and targeted. I don't really know, but At they were cast. saying they wish we would talk more about ball play. So please let's get into it. Okay. Okay. So I'm not an expert in like full ball play there. You may have to bring someone else on to talk about that. That feels maybe a little more in like the BDSM kink space fetish space. But what I can talk about is sort of the more generalized mm -hmm. ball play. Mm -hmm. And not also say not all people like their balls touched. I mean, I think that this is something that can be specific. And so you would probably with a new partner want to check in, right? Like mm, you want to say something like your balls look really sexy. I really want to touch them. Is that something you enjoy? 
So you'd kind of just get a little bit of consent around that. And some people might say like, actually, no, like they're really sensitive or I don't enjoy that. Mm-hmm. More likely than not, you're going to get a like, yeah, let's see what's in there. <laughs> and the same as what we've been talking about exploring more with the cock is actually exploring with the different te- like textures and sensations on your hand. So you can try things like just one finger and like, I don't know if you, like my brother and I used to take a bath and we would like soap up our backs and then like draw things and be like, what did I draw? <laughs> I mean, if you get really like worried, you could try something like that. Like, okay, I'm just going to like write an A and see kind of what happens. Like letting yourself get playful and creative. Mm-hmm. You can do multiple fingers, almost like raindrops going down. You can do full palm. You can put some spit or lube on there and do full palm. You can hold the base of the balls sort of tight again, sort of like a ball cock ring does Mm -hmm. and tighten them into the sack. And that's often sort of a way to kind of like increase pleasure and tighten them. Because depending on every man's ball sack is also very, very different. The way the balls hang, sort of like how tight they get, how loose the skin is. And so it sort of just depends like what makes it easier for you to play with. So sort of like gently wrapping your hand around and checking in. Do you want me to squeeze harder or a little bit softer or not squeeze at all, right? You can check in on these things. But some people may say like, yeah, squeeze a little harder. I'm curious, like what would that feel like? And then when you have the balls a little bit tighter, you can try different things like nails going up and over, nails coming down. In general, most men don't want pain, on their cock or the whole Mm -hmm. cock region, but you can check that out too. Some people might want like a little bit of pinching or a little bit of flicking that can sometimes be fun. But again, all these things are stuff you kind of want to like check in and see what Mm -hmm. people, how people feel about that. And then as well, like if you end up with a partner who really likes kind of that squeezing on their balls, you can kind of hold onto their balls at the bottom while you do different things with your hands. Mm. Fun. (laughs) <laughs> right. Yeah. So fun. Yeah, so fun. <laughs> then uh, the area behind the ball. Oh, did you have a question? Nope. You go. Keep going. Okay. So the area behind the balls is really, really interesting too. Uh, you know, I think because we as a culture just feel so much shame around our assholes, men, a lot of them do too. We don't really talk about that area. I probably won't go into the anal stuff today because then that takes us in like a whole other avenue. Mm-hmm. But the area behind the balls is like a whole section that is actually where the cock continues on. Like there is lots of pleasure in there and there can be lots oh. of like great sensations for your partner. Mm-hmm. So same thing is with the light touch, sort of like moving up with tickles. You can try putting, um, like making a fist and pushing up into that area and almost like vibrating your hand. That can Whoa. feel really interesting for some people. Mm-hmm. Let's see what else is in there. That area is a little <laughs> tougher to get lube. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you have some, you can try and get back there, but you, you definitely ne- don't necessarily need to get all the way down there with it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like you're doing a lot that would – need to be like an up and down motion. It's more of like a stationary kind of pressure. Right. Right. That one down Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then when we go back up into the shaft, which is Mm -hmm. I think where everyone's thinking about, Mm -hmm. there's, we want to really include the base too. So it's like the base, it has it goes into the pelvic bone and there can be a really, really grounding sensation. I think for men and for women of putting a lot of pressure into that pelvic bone. Mm -hmm. And so you can sort of hold into that area. You can move, gently move the cock back and forth and sort of see like play. You can do like figure eights or little mini circles or ups and downs and just sort of see like, does your partner like that? Does that feel interesting? And you can be doing, it's sort of like patting your head and rubbing your belly at some point. I feel like (laughs) with hand Mm -hmm. jobs sometimes, Mm -hmm. like if you're getting really crazy with it because like you may be doing like one thing with one hand and like one thing with the other hand and you're just like okay like brain (laughs) brain twister inside (laughs) and that's sort of the idea is like can you let yourself let go of this like I hold with one hand and I go up and down Mm -hmm. if you want to get to orgasm most likely your partner has been masturbating in that way not everybody And so you may need to go into that really consistent up and down motion. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, we don't need to worry about that. Like at least 10 minutes of trying other stuff before we go there. That's what I say. I love that. That is a long time, but I appreciate it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It also could go by quickly. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And so when we're talking about using both hands, mm -hmm. what would be the best positioning um, as both the giver and the receiver if we want to utilize like all of our tools, these two? I mean, so this is meaning like we're now, in, you're in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're not we've behind entered the pizza the house hut. And we've walked to the bedroom. <laughs> We're on the we're, bed. We're not at dinner with our in-laws. Um, <laughs> typically, it would be your partner either sitting or laying back in a comfortable position. Um, legs a little bit wider, so not close together, where they're just feeling like they can relax and melt into whatever surface it, they're on. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the easiest for people is honestly probably a massage table where your you could stand next to your partner. And so you're not sitting on the ground in like a crisscross position. Cause one of the things that happens, you know, is sitting in that position next to our partners. That's how you're going to be able to use both hands. You can't be like leaning up, you know, right. or laying next to them. You're really kind of like up having access to your both hands. Not everyone can sit in that position for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So you can sit like off the side of the bed or stand off the side of bed. If you have a tall enough bed, which can mimic a little bit like what a massage table would be like. Mm -hmm. um, or you can bring a chair. That can be another option too. Ooh. I love that idea. That I sounds fucking wonderful. love that. <laughs> yeah. It's like your throne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you end up, if they end up in a chair and you end up in a chair, you're probably going to end up in a lot of eye contact. So it is something to think about like what type of eye contact you're wanting. Mm -hmm. Um, it can be sexy, like if you want touch back too, to be in something sexy or nude. But again, I think it just depends on like what you're hoping for, you know, like, do mm -hmm. you want your partner reaching out and also touching you as you're touching them or no, you want to just be touching them. Mm -hmm. That's something to think about. In terms of other things to consider finishing, if that is something that happens for mm. you and your partner during a hand job. Like, if I'm giving a hand job, should I just, like, have a Kleenex nearby and I grab it? Should I just let everything go and have prepared for that? <laughs> what are your recommendations? Um, that's an interesting question because I'm thinking about so many things right now. You know, is it more like there's a fear that there's – like ejaculate, like it's going to get on stuff or like it's got to be cleaned up quickly or. I think for me, I've just always felt like that's an awkward moment. Like mm -hmm. if I, mm -hmm. I, I feel responsible, I guess mm -hmm. for it. You I feel, <laughs> what was that? You did this thing. You made this yeah. thing happen. Like, <laughs> it's my job to find a place for it. And so I'm either like turning it back on them <laughs> or take it back. Oh, it to me. oh, I see what you're asking. Not after they come. Like, where do you literally put the cum? Yes. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was thinking you were asking like after they come and it's okay. <laughs> Got it. I think it really depends. You know, I think most people would probably be the most comfortable letting their partner come onto their own stomach or chest. I think mm -hmm. that's where like the most typical ejaculation is going to happen. But, you know, there's other places that it can go depending on what you guys want to do. I don't think mm -hmm. there's like a right or wrong thing. If you're wanting to catch it before like they come or you're wanting to like throw a towel over them. If a, if a couple was in my session and they were saying that's what they were doing, I would get really curious about what's happening in those moments. Like if there's some shame or some discomfort with, with fluids. Mm -hmm. um, For me, it's my I, linens. I like my linens yes, and I don't okay. want to change them. Okay. Night, I totally understand. And yeah. so I'm guessing your partner has a lot of cum and it leaks off his belly. Is that what happens? Um, We don't do a lot. Not particularly. <laughs> I just like... <laughs> Just something you're worried about. It's okay. just something I always think about. Like I think about all body fluids on my like Linens. linen sheets <laughs> that I love and that like yeah. are just very comfortable and I don't no, want them I get to it. be wet. I mean, I actually, I totally get the fluid thing and I really get the not wanting to change your sheet thing. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can, yeah. I mean, if it's like 10 o'clock at night and you're playing and you want to go to sleep after, no one wants to like wake up and like change their bed. Right? That's the exact scenario. 
<laughs> right. So we have a couple of options here. One, you can get a dog blanket that's waterproof and easily washable. And you okay. put that down under every time you play. So I do have a have sex blanket. We recently okay. got sex Great. blankets. Yeah. Yes. So. Okay. So that takes care of a lot of issues around mm-hmm. like fluids leaking. Also, I normally, I sometimes recommend for couples like have de- dedicated washcloths like next to the bed, wherever your lube might be or sex toys are easily accessible in the nightstand. And they can be like the little hand towels or the slightly larger one, just kind of depending what you want. And that way it's like you just have the, you know, a color that you grab that, you know, I typically recommend getting something that you enjoy, not just like the cheapest knockoff white version at CVS or that something. That are going to like leave little lint balls all right. over. Right. It's not sexy. It's not sexy. You kind of want something that when you grab, it feels nice on your hand. And you also want something that if it touches your skin or your partner's skin, that mm-hmm. it does feel good too. Like that it, mm-hmm. it has a feeling of like being taken care of and that you're in like a nice hotel or something like that. Not just mm-hmm. like got it from the dollar store, you know? Here's this mm. scrap. That's important. <laughs> yeah. Come in yeah. here. <laughs> Come you know, if it. you're if you're in a um a situation where there is an orgasm happening and, and semen coming out and you don't know where to put it, that's a little more complicated. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking like, I don't know, you're at a company Christmas party in somewhere and you're like where are we going to put this come, you know, <laughs> that I think you have to maybe get a little bit more, um, I don't know, adventurous, <laughs> try adventurous, <laughs> yeah. think ahead. Yeah. I think having like a good, I really like the idea of kind of fi- being intentional about the towels that you use. I've been someone that keeps like towels by the bed when I'm consistently having sex with someone. Um, and they're never like, they're like the towel I can grab quickest from the laundry or the bathroom, but it would be nice to like spend a little money on feeling good, especially on my genitals or theirs. And it's like Mm -hmm. not the roughest cardboard, Mm -hmm. uh, washcloth. I mean, that would be nice. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Absolutely. And in general, cleaning semen up more quickly is easier because once it starts to dry, then it's a little bit tougher to clean up. So you know, I think it is totally fine in a couple to just like throw the towel on after like, say Mm -hmm. your partner comes, they come on their tummy, you can just like throw it on top of them because it's going to soak up into the towel, Mm -hmm. which then just makes the actual cleanup faster, which really just means you can get to the aftercare in an easier way. Like they don't have to go shower or go to the bathroom and like wipe, wipe, scrub, scrub. It gets stuck in hair and it can like pinch a little bit, you know, all of that stuff. Like it just, in general and flow, it can tend Mm -hmm. to make it a little bit easier. I also like the idea of washcloths better than a Kleenex because for some reason with like a Kleenex, it almost makes it feel a little dirty. And I don't Mm -hmm. want that to be like the impression that I'm giving if I reach for a Kleenex. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Right. -hmm. Right. Like a little tawdry kind of like I don't know that if I word. knew what that word oh. meant. <laughs> <laughs> like naughty, like um, mm. like dirty fun or dirty like no, like not, dirty not in fun. a bad way. Like oh, I don't okay. want them to feel like okay. oh, I'm grabbing a Kleenex. Like clean yourself up, Got gross. It. Right here, I'm after this Yeah, thing like at a washcloth right. feels like a kindness. A Kleenex mm. feels like a you're in your shit out. Right. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. totally. I, my thing with the clean, I don't, I don't have the dirty thing. I understand that, but I don't, I don't necessarily have that. The thing I think about with the Kleenexes is like um, the planet, mostly. Mm-hmm. That's fair. <laughs> like a much and sweeter. Like, is just like not as. <laughs> she thinks about the planet. Okay. <laughs> I'm just an asshole. That's fine. Uh, no, no, <laughs> you're <kidding>. not. <laughs> Just, I was like, I mean, that's sort of what I, that's yeah, where I go. Yeah. That's a good consideration. <laughs> and mm-hmm. also my other thought is that for many people, one Kleenex is also not going to be enough to ke- get all the cum. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of mm-hmm. people when they come is going to be bigger than one Kleenex. So now you're like going through, you know, like a couple of boxes. Mm-hmm. And that's like just a couple not of tissues good. In the box. And little pieces come off of Kleenex too. Yeah. They do. <laughs> Yeah, it and it depends, like, like, did you buy the nice Kleenex, you know? Right. <laughs> the Vicks yeah. ones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that might burn. <laughs> that might burn. 
It gives me like if I have Elmer's glue on my hands and I grab a Kleenex and then you have Kleenex hands. You're paper you know? macheing your hands, basically. Yeah, that's right. What, that's what well, I think of. Right. So the timing it would be like, do you know the person you're playing with enough to know when their orgasm is coming, and to be able to move your hand not in the way of the stream coming out? I think that's yeah. I think that's what you're talking about. Is like, what do I do if it's all over my hands? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, one of the ways you can tell if your partner's about to come is their balls will actually tighten up and move ah. really, really close to their bodies. It depends, again, how, like, um, much space is in their balls, like, how far down they hang, basically. But in general, they'll get very, very tight and almost, like, up to their body to a point where you can't really see them in some regard. And typically, and also the cock gets a lot harder. Most people's cocks will get, like, much more red or blue. And that that's when you know the orgasm is about to happen. Huh. Fascinating. That is right? fascinating. Damn. <laughs> well, I feel honestly, I we've talked about hand jobs and the feelings that come with hand jobs so much more than I thought I had inside of me. <laughs> um, but is there anything we didn't ask or didn't go over that you feel like would be important to bring up? <sighs> I think I just want to reiterate, have fun with it. You know, like let go of this idea. You you have to have anything for it. Trust your hands. Trust trying new things. Um, and and check in. Check in with your partner around it. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Okay. Where can our listeners continue connecting with you after this episode? Yes. Well, I hope everyone does continue connecting with me. And the best place to connect regularly is Instagram. And my handle is Keely Rankin Intimacy Coach. That's a great place. We're doing lots of stuff on there. And then you can also find me on my website, which is KeelyRankin.com, K-E-E-L-E-Y-R-A-N-K-I-N. And in the next month or so, we're going to be launching a new course called Sex Class. And it's actually going to cover a lot of what we talked about here. And it's going to be so, so much more. I'm really, really excited for it. We're filming it right now. It's going great. It's going to be awesome. So I hope I hope everyone comes and checks it out. Amazing. We'll put all of that in the show notes. Oh, remember how fast I can walk my hand across a table? You can walk it so fast. Emma has many skills, and one of them is really fast hand walking. Imagine how (laughs) um, that comes into play in a hand job. Imagine. (laughs) Just imagine. A new, uh, it's not position, new technique. It's called piano keys, and you just... (laughs) Do that on a penis. You just that didn't work. Play that penis up and down. <laughs> play it like a flute. That was just like um, tickling at that point. Or a recorder. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Keely, for coming on the podcast <laughs> this week. Um, you are an absolute treasure to talk to. And thank you to our listeners for hanging out this week. You can head on over to Apple Podcasts to rate, review, and subscribe to Honey Do Me. You can leave us a written review. You can head on over to Spotify and rate us. You can watch us on YouTube like we talked about in the beginning. Um, You can give yourself a kiss and (laughs) spank your bottom and tell yourself to have a great week. And you can also follow us on social media (laughs) at Honey Do Me Podcast um, if you want to stay up to date on what's going on with us. And that's all she wrote. That's all, we are so <laughs> discoverable and, and tired. So mm-hmm. come say hi somewhere. <laughs> Just and, anywhere uh, you want. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.